Thirty-five, which is Circumstances, Seventy-three, Fifty, Amber Valley Drive. <coughs> Meow. Meow. I know. <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> it's you Mr. Are feeding them today, yeah, Jim. Oh yeah, I gotta feed the cats. Hoofer might jump up here and ask him for more, though. Never know about him. So, uh, everybody here, everybody okay? Yeah. Okay. Doing all right so far. <sighs> Got a little rain the last couple of days. Uh... Yeah, well, we got a lot of rain this morning. It woke me up. It was raining so hard it woke me up. Which is uh, kind of unusual. <clears throat> I actually thought a semi-truck had come, come through because it, of how loud the rain was against the trees and the windows and stuff. And that's well, actually, uh, at least in Milford, they can use it because it's been several weeks before since they've had any rain at all, and it's been pretty gotten pretty dry up until I guess two days ago. Yeah, yeah, it uh, it was needed, but it there was a lot of it, and it happened all at once, all of a sudden. And like I said, it was really loud. And I thought, I thought a semi truck or the garbage uh, truck had come through because it usually when it comes through, it's very loud. And that's <laughs> that's what I thought when I woke up. I was like, oh, he's really loud this, this morning. And then I realized it was rain. So. Our, uh, in Milford, our garbage trucks come through on the same day of the week, every week. So, so uh, I know when to expect it. I know it comes through on Thursday or excuse me, Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, and in, and here in Fremont, it comes through on Monday. So, um. Oh. I just have to remember what time zone I'm in, and I'll be I'm in good shape. Ours come. I mean, we we have three dump bins, you know, because because we live in the apartment. Actually, I think there's four. There might be four, but ours comes like I think twice a week, and it's one of the big Brumke trucks that picks those bins up and dumps yeah. them into the back and makes all kinds of noise while it's doing it. And it usually comes through about five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, is... that's about, that's about what ours in Milford. We only have two bins in Milford. Uh, there's a classic garbage, which gets all the rubbish. And then we have um, a recycle bin, which gets the stuff for recycling. So yeah yeah here in fremont we got three of them we got yard waste recycle and classic junk <laughs> junk yeah well i don't i don't actually pay any attention to when they come because i mean the bins are down there i could take the trash out anytime so yeah I don't actually pay attention to when they come. I just know that they come. I, usually, usually I can hear them coming. Um, and usually it's twice a week because those things get full. And then if there was like last, was it last week? Week before there was a holiday and they didn't come. And you could tell because there was so much trash that it was overflowing. Okay, so this week, is, this week is virtual, 
next week is in person, but then you got a virtual in there. Now, isn't one of the weeks, Jim, isn't it short somehow or another? Half an hour yeah, short? The, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the next week will be on October 5th. It's normal. Then October 12th is virtual. And then October 19th is 5 to 6.30. That's a in-person. Apparently, there's so a fairly... fairly 6.30. There's a fairly big group follows us uh, on the days that there's a group after us. I don't know. They don't let you see the groups that you're competing with. Uh, the last one that came after us was a, a bunch of girls, a bunch of females. Yep. So big deal is we got next week is in person, regular time. And then we skip a week, and then we have a short one on the 19th, October 19th. Okay. So we'll just keep with it, mainly just keep it, keep it, keep people updated once a week, try to let everybody know, you know, next week is normal in person. So we, we just worry about the next one. <laughs> Okay. That makes it simpler for us because we, One, we have short short memory, short short attention spans here, you know. One week at a time. Yeah, There's... one week at a time. Sweet Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so this week we had some news. Um yesterday the uh Raspberry Pi five was released. Supposedly available now for pre-order, but uh, it'll be sometime in October before they start delivering. Not that that's a long ways in the future, but I, I'm I missed it. I missed that the Pi Five was actually finally here. Yep, it actually is. Now, the one thing they didn't announce in anything that I any of the news story, articles I could find was uh, what the pricing is going to be. Well, I suppose if we click on <laughs> that didn't really work. <laughs> I was going to say if we click on uh, pre-order, but it just took us to a uh... To a list of uh, pre-approved people who are going to sell them. Well, apparently there's a couple of magazines that you can uh, uh, subscribe to. And if you get the hard copy versions, that puts you priority on their list. Yeah, I have... Uh... <clears throat> The Raspberry Pi Foundation has um, started making it so that that you they really want you to subscribe to the magazine now. Yeah, um, you can still get it for free, but you have to wait till almost the end of the month to do it. So, okay, here we go. Oh, that's uh, that's quite a quite a jump uh share screen you find find the pricing yeah that is not the screen i wanted to share hang on <laughs> we've got the eight gig model looks like it's eighty dollars Eight zero. Mm hmm. And pre order for the four gig model looks like it's sixty bucks. That's that's quite a that's quite a jump. So I wonder if they're going to offer a two gig model. 
Well, like, according to the release I read, there's going to be a one, two, four, and eight. But in practical matter, they're probably going to go for the high revenue one for uh, priorities. Yeah. Well, see, I think, I think Raspberry Pi Foundation has learned that people are actually willing to spend money on these stupid things over the shortages, and they've changed their pricing structure a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because even micro center who was actually selling them below cost i'm I'm sure they were selling them cheaper but even they have upped their prices um to reflect you know the fact that they're back in stock and people are willing to pay the money pay for them so now, are they one of the outfits that's going to do the five? I do not see them on the list. Yep, there they are. They're on the list. They are on the list. They don't have a pre-order deal, which doesn't surprise me because they don't really do pre-order. <sighs> But it does look like they've got the Pi 400 kit back in stock. And, well, that's really the only Raspberry Pi that they, they've got a couple of the zeros. It looks like they've got a couple of the kits, the Raspberry Pi 400, which is the, uh, you know, the Pi 4 in the keyboard. For ninety nine bucks, so. and uh, let's see, Pie Shop US, Central Computers, the Smart Tech Store. I have no idea who that is. Newark, uh, so Central Computer. That's what it says. Central Computers. Yeah, that's that's here in Northern California. Okay. I think um, they may have something in Southern California, but it's primarily the West Coast. Yeah, they. it doesn't look like they do pre-orders either. It looks like, it does look like they've got some stock of Raspberry Pi 4s, though. So. Well, heck, for what they want for a Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs... Spending an extra three bucks for the uh, Pi Five with eight gigs, it's it's kind of on par. Let's see, uh, where was I? Pi Pi Shop USA, Central Computers, Newark, Adafruit, Maker Bright. Don't know who they are. The Pi Hut, Spark Fun, Veros. Micro Center, Mauser, Chicago Electronic Distributors. I bet they're in Chicago. Canakit and Digikey are the U.S. suppliers or distributors. Yeah, Newark is uh, is a town which is actually embedded in Fremont. It's you know a couple three miles from where we are here. Newark, uh, didn't they start in Ohio? Newark, Ohio? No. No. First of all, it's an all Chinese uh, organization. They've got five or six spots in the Bay Area and one in southern, someplace in southern, California, southern China. Hmm. Okay. I don't think they have any outside of the state of California. Hey, Steve, what's happening? Hello. Not a lot. Happy to see that the Raspberry Pi 5 got announced. Yep. <laughs> we were just talking about it. 
I haven't ordered one yet, but tomorrow's payday. Yeah, tomorrow is also rent day. So yeah. wow. that is uh, a no-go for me buying microcontrollers this week. It'll get better. So what else did I miss? That was pretty much it. Yeah. The price. You missed the price. Uh, yeah. Raspberry Pi 5 for uh, 4 gig for 60 bucks and an 8 gig for 80 bucks. Yep. And oh wow, Barry's here. We're we're getting we're getting some people. Hey Barry, how you doing? Yeah, it says uh it says Newark its headquarters is in Chicago. Newark? Newark the the company you're talking about central computer. No, Newark. Oh, 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 oh. There's a central computer in Newark, California. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I, so what they list there, it, they do list the central computer, do they not? Yes, they do. And the, those are all in California, except for one in China. I'm, I'm, I got gotcha. you. So, no, there is a Newark, uh, they, they're like uh, electronic supply, electrical supply company. Big, big warehouse, basically. Okay. And I thought, I actually thought they started in Ohio, in Newark, Ohio. They may have. I, I, I don't but know. It says their corporate headquarters is in Chicago. And they have bought, they've bought Element 14. They, they're the ones that bought mcm they had bought dozens of other uh electric warehouses electronic warehouses so element 14 is no longer independent hasn't been for a while nope I am. They used to sponsor Bloom. Mm -hmm. Now that's what almost ten years ago at this point. Yep. There. Here we go. It's barely seeable. Element 14, an Advent company. And if we go to Newark, an Advent company. Okay. They're, they're pretty much all the same anymore. And if you, I don't even think, I don't even think MCM still has a website. Oh, I guess they do. Oh, that is no, definitely not don't. the MCM. <laughs> that is definitely not the <laughs> MCM I remember. <laughs> what is that? Some kind of a clothing store? <laughs> it looks that way. Um, click, click on the wrong thing, and we might, we might not be happy about that. <laughs> Uh, they had bought they had bought a half a dozen different large warehouses though all at one time um, and if I remember right it was a company that actually was a European company 
had bought all the warehouses and then somehow or another they had bought Newark as well but somehow Newark had a better brand name or something and that's the one they kept but I don't really remember how all that how all that played out I just know one day they I I was talking to the guy at MCM and he said, Oh yeah, we're we've been bought. Uh they're closing this location down. He said they've been bought by uh a company that had ended up was a big warehouse, but had bought a bunch of other warehouses. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's not good. <laughs> of course that was when I was able to get a bunch of parts and stuff. Fennel. Fennel is the one. Premier Fennel is a distributor of products and electric design and maintenance repair throughout Europe, North America, and operation in 36 countries. So, now it says that, that their headquarters is in Chicago. But it's on the other side of the street. It's on the other side of the street. <laughs> They own all of downtown Chicago. <laughs> it looks to me like Fennell is still operating worldwide. And if you're if you go to their website. It's Newark here in, in the States. They're one and the same. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what <laughs> Newark's website looks like. Almost identical. Oh, it is identical. <laughs> They've changed the name right down to the gripper. Huh. So I think it was Fennell that bought all these companies and they kept they kept the Newark brand in the US. Uh, it looks like if you're in Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, or some other Asian countries, that Element 14 would be your default shopping experience. Um, I think I need to rebuild the battery on this, on this tablet, though. So, I think you're <laughs> right, Steve. I think. I was just going with it. Getting a little old and new cells would certainly be better. It, um. Uh... It was taking a charge really well and everything. And then, you know, the, the day that I texted you and asked you all about the what was going on with it, it decided that it didn't want to take a charge. 
it decided oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I got to finally take a charge, but I think at least one of the cells in there is dead. It got super hot. It got the battery got really really hot, and it only got to ninety eight percent charge, and it was on the charger all night long. Kept saying seven minutes seven minutes to full charge and i'm like yeah it's been an hour and a half it it's not going to take a full charge <laughs> got a microsoft clock <laughs> <laughs> biggest when when we when we meet in person maybe if you've got um it's got little teeny tiny uh three prong like a tri head, like like a Phillips, only the, only with uh, the Nintendo th screwdriver. <laughs> it's it, called a it, tri wing. It's a tri wing. Yeah, if you go order it on Amazon, they call it a Nintendo screwdriver. This thing's tiny. They're they're tiny. I've got so, that. Um, I think I could probably open the battery pack up though if if I had the right screwdriver. I tried a teeny, teeny, tiny, um, you know, standard driver that I had, but it, it was, it wasn't small enough to get in there. Is it lobed like a Phillips driver just has three of them or is it more of a triangular thing? It more like a, that Canadian slanted. thing. I think it's more of a triangle. Okay. That Canadian thing being the maple leaf or what? <laughs> no, no, no. Robertson. Oh, the Robertson. square drive. But it's a slightly tapered thing. Um, there's a three-lobed driver that looks like a three-sided version of Robertson. Oh, wow. I don't have my screwdrivers with me. If I had known that, I would have felt naked all day. <laughs> you get that when you forget your pants. Yeah. I had uh, I think I had found the driver for it once uh, on, on eBay but they had different sizes and I'm like I'm not sure what size this is um Yeah, it's it's not really a. Oh, he he ran off. <laughs> now he's back. It's it's not really a Robertson. Robertson's more square. It's it's more. It looks to me like it's more like a uh, Phillips driver missing one of the one of the legs from the Phillips. So this is kind of a chicken foot shape yeah kind of looks like that ah yes looks like a mercedes emblem And I, I'm guessing that what's in this is probably is either a triple zero or a double zero, but I don't know for sure because they're all pretty small. 
I guess that one's not small. That one looks pretty big. So they call it a tri wing. The tri wing bit. And then, of course, it's the it's deep down inside of the battery, so you, you need a longer one so that you can get down in there. But it's kind of like a security bit. And from what I could tell, it looks more like that than anything okay. else. Click the link. Click the link. Okay, I clicked the link. The link in the chat. Oh, I can't see the chat. I, I'm sharing the screen. Is that a try bit? Yes. Okay. I might. Hmm. Well, if Amazon doesn't sell it, it doesn't exist. So I mean, that's the prime source for everything. Yeah, they're trying to be Alibaba. Honestly, they're probably in bed with Alibaba at this point. Yeah. Cohabitating, so to speak. Huh. Okay. I'll order that. Thank thank you. Thank you, Barry. That's cheap enough. As you say, if you dig around, there's some other ones where you can get a couple other sizes with it for another buck or two. So in case it is a different size, but it's probably a Y00. Yeah. I know I didn't have I didn't have anything that was even close to fitting into it. So I tried with just a regular single blade. What just is a, the battery type? It is a lithium ion. So that's good. Um Except if you're concerned about fires. Oh. Just keeps you warm at night. I was I was actually a little uh when it kept say it said at ninety eight percent and kept saying seven minutes and never charged, I was like, This thing's just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. <laughs> This is the um, 9300 milliamp hour, 10.8 volt, 94 watt, 94 watt hour battery. And apparently it, diff, I guess, depending upon which profile you're, you're actually using in BIOS, it could be an 8700 milliamp hour battery um that's a it's a double pack so it's the bigger of the two ah, i don't know what's actually in there until i open it up i'm guessing you know it hasn't it hasn't bubbled or bowed or anything so that's good doesn't mean but, sorry i tried to mute that let's see there is it says cell made in japan further processed in china and don't throw away which all to recycle. <clears throat> Until I get in there, I won't really know what battery is actually in there. 
these stupid battery packs cost more than what I paid for the stupid tablet. Well, well duh. <laughs> used. Used. I couldn't find I couldn't find a de I, it, it would be cheaper to find a broken laptop and take a chance on the battery being good. One with a damaged screen or something. So rebuilding the battery is definitely <laughs> definitely the right option. I also, I went into BIOS and changed that key from being function two to function one. And Linux Mint doesn't recognize it as being anything. So. Really? Yeah. You know, I was, I was at least hoping that it would, you know, bring up the help screen or something. But it doesn't recognize the do not rotate button. It recognizes the window button and the volume buttons. And that's the it's only two buttons. not function as in F keys on the keyboard. It's a wholly different thing. If you go into keyboard shortcuts and want to assign something and then press that, it should recognize it and it may come back as like F18 or something. There's a lot more than, than 12 F keys. Yeah. And it gave me a whole list of them that I could assign to it. Like I, I'm pretty sure it went way beyond F12. Mm. I mean, but it should be reporting something to the OS. It's just that that's something isn't mapped. At one point I had a an old IBM keyboard that had four rows of function keys. It was sweet. Never did learn to program the thing though. <laughs> Okay, I can maybe I will try to make the key yeah it doesn't it doesn't recognize that key at all oh it recognized that key recognize day one it didn't do anything huh I'll play with him. That's interesting. I couldn't get A1 to recognize either, so.
So did Ray bring us all many new fancy toys? I haven't talked to Ray. Is he back from China now? Uh, he's supposed to be. They say he was leaving last meeting to come home. I thought he was going to some place in South Carolina, though, rather than going home. Yeah, he's going on vacation. That's right. Yeah, he, he may have just stayed in South Carolina for a while. I think they're about to get some heavy weather down there. It worked. A1 worked at least. A2 still doesn't work. It isn't assigned to anything yet. It didn't even reckon. Oh, it opened up dozens of them. That's not good. It, it did, didn't even recognize it. Or maybe it doesn't like, maybe I've changed it to something that's conflicting with something else or something. But now I could hit A1. Cool. That's awesome. You know, um, Mate, the Mate desktop didn't even recognize it, though. I, no. I went into the keyboard shortcuts and, and tried to do the same thing with it, and it, didn't, it did not did not like it hmm. so um uh, i'm i'm really starting to dig cinnamon <laughs> yeah cinnamon's nice i've i've customized the look so that it looks more or less like mate because i like the way mate looks but mate just seems like it's lacking a lot of functionality that cinnamon well, it's has. A different desktop environment. Yeah. I don't know. To me, they all look surprisingly similar. Yeah, I think they just boil down to what people like and how many people actually work on them to add the features to, for yeah. the looks. Yeah. yeah. Mate's not very popular, so a lot of people haven't tweaked it out yet. Well, mate, mate was popular right after. Yeah. Well, oh, it's yeah. been, <laughs> you know, seven or eight years or something in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I've stuck with it. I like it. But now that I've been playing around with, with cinnamon, I'm kind of like, oh. <clears throat> okay. That picture I just sent is the other three-lobed thing that I was talking about. Yep, that, that's not it. That's okay. not it at all. Um, I got both. So, the... Speaking of pictures inside of the chat, unless I am missing it somewhere. Oh, maybe I could do that. Just did a drag and drop on that. When when the video actually finally converts and you know it gives the the breaks down the the chat and the video and the audio and all that, mm -hmm. the pictures don't get saved. Hmm. So all those pictures that that Ray sent us while he was in China didn't actually get saved. Well, yeah, because China doesn't want that getting out. 
<laughs> I don't think it was China's fault. <laughs> Who do you think owns this app? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They've got a dot US domain. <laughs> Dang straight they do. They know how the game's played. <laughs> While well, they record all the meetings. Yeah. They're training their AI. No. It's just uh it's something that that we should be aware of though is it it doesn't actually save the pictures. I wonder if that's a thing that you can change. I don't know. When I just hovered over top of the, the picture that you sent, though, it does give a download button. So not that not that I really want to save a picture of the screwdriver bit. But <laughs> picture of a bit that you don't need. But there, there is at least an option to... to to do it it's just something that we have to remember to do that that triangle bit like that that's what i thought was inside of uh nintendo i thought nintendo like the cartridges uh -oh. used the triangles yeah, it way back in the day but all the new stuff's that try bit okay and that's what i say i don't remember what i ran into something that had that and when i i mean i've got some but like it was the same problems like i don't, you can't go down in the hole because the bits are too big um but yeah they were called nintendo kits when i ordered it here like last year okay yeah well that 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 one that you that one on amazon that looks like it, that looks right yeah well and that's like i said there's and you can look around there's some other ones that might be a little cheaper or better um or you know there's a kit for different sizes too um because yeah. the I only think, the only kits that i saw were you know the bigger bits that fit into the screwdrivers and they're yeah. too big to go down inside the hole but yeah, I got a cassette with like three of them and like the little things for like popping phones and crap apart and all kinds of other stuff. And yeah, I think it was like 11 bucks. Then it's all in like a little case, like you get one of those little boxer bit things. Yeah, it was pretty nice for 11 bucks. There, there it is. But you can't see because I don't have a camera set up. <laughs> I got like seven hard drives pigtailed off my computer. One of these days, I'm gonna get organized better. <laughs> seven hard drives pigtailed off of your machine. Oh, yeah, somebody's gotta, you know. Got to try to keep up with my MB server. And it's sporting, I don't know, almost like 20 terabytes now. And it's still not organized and backed up. So, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're as bad as I am. Uh... Well, I, I needed to walk off with Steve's little box the other day. I mean, that's what I really need. <laughs> I was thinking he probably got a lot of videos I'd like to see anyway. I'll, I'll well, be that's... your offsite backup. I was going to say, that's what I ought to do. Is I was, I was thinking here yesterday, it's like I ought to figure out how to take one of these rigs and then like either set all this up so you can like download what you want to download and have access to whatever. Because, I mean, you were asking for the, the one show. I was like, I don't have. But it's like, you know, there's a bazillion other things similar. Yeah.
Uh, if that's a Seagate drive you've got, I have had surprisingly bad luck with those. I, I, no, Western Digital. Ah, okay. And, I... and it wasn't expensive, but it wasn't cheap either. 16 terabyte. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Best, nice. Best, best Buy sold those really nice back in Thanksgiving last year, year before last. They were like a hundred bucks off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I bought the last one. I wish I had three more. <laughs> was down in I was down in Kentucky, and I had already known that I needed to get a new one. And I walked in, and Best Buy had this one on sale for like seventy dollars off. And I was like, "Oh, yeah, that's mine." It was the last one they had, <laughs> so. Yeah, I've got like a 14 terabyte model, and then they didn't have them in stock until after Christmas or something, and then they'd gone up like a hundred bucks. So I was like, meh. But they've come back down again at some point, but all the prices are going up again. It's like, and I'm really not a fan of the powered off externals like that, but I have like five of them. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I, I don't mind these so much. This this one doesn't like the power. It, it likes the power supply it came with. It doesn't necessarily like the other power supplies that I've got. But there's this is a Toshiba, and it's a five terabyte. And the only reason I bought it was because I needed storage, and. Micro Center was completely 100% out of Western Digitals, but they had this Toshiba for, I don't, I don't remember. I think it was $99 at the time. Yeah. Toshiba have a lot better warranty usually than any of them now. Um, Cause he really got to watch what zone your drive's coming from now. If you want yeah. warranty from Seagate or Western Digital, it's disturbing. I, uh, I have that that drive actually has not given me any problem. Um, I did. I bought a Seagate one time years ago, and that was the one drive that just it gave me all kinds of hate and discontent. And I ended up having to uh, it died on me. I had to freeze it for a while and I recovered probably about 70 percent off off of what was on the drive and then i refroze it and i could never get it to work again it, yeah it's, it was just gone usually after the first freezer thing you got to pretty much leave it in the freezer to access it again yeah it after the second time <clears throat> i i think i tried that actually it but it it was gone it just and I said never again. I will never buy another Seagate drive ever. I've the Western Digitals have never. I've, I've got a, I've got a couple of them that got some bad sectors, but they've never given me a, a huge problem. <clears throat> I've had good luck with Seagate's uh, enterprise grade drives, and bought plenty of those. But now, yeah. I'm getting Toshiba drives because they got five year warranties. Yeah. I'll find I... out whether they deserve that or not. <laughs> well, I say nobody else does them anymore, hardly unless you buy the like ridiculously priced yeah. gold or you know, commercial or for home uses black drives from Western Digital. But Seagate, I don't even does five year anymore. Yeah. Um unless it's an enterprise drive and the the best was hgst but western digital bought them here a few years back or like it's the start of covid um but those were all five-year warranty drives yeah and had the low the best failure rate of any drive on the market um but i haven't really seen numbers since western digital took them over but seagate's usually got the worst it, some of theirs, even the Enterprise, there's a couple models that are like two and a half percent to three percent, which is astronomical, I think, for an Enterprise drive. But yeah, you know, it is what it is. But they also make more drives than anybody, so 
Oh. Seagate makes more than Western Digital? Oh, yeah. They're cheaper, so they don't, Western Digital don't sell as many. But, you know, if you ever, if you ever look at, like, a hard drive rating ranks or whatever, the, the volume of Seagate's dwarfs a Western Digital quite a bit. But that's where the Western Digital has a better failure rate because of it. You know, it's like uh, they're like one and a quarter percent or something on some of their models and under one on a lot of them. But like I said, they're I, what's really kind of leery to me is I how much you guys have messed with them. I haven't had a drive fail for a while, so I'm kind of, but I've been doing a lot of shopping and reading through forums. The sheer volume of Seagate not standing behind drives has gotten stupid. Um, because they're they're called like gray market where they're being sold in Asia and then shipped over here, or people have done like that. What was it there was Burst Coin, but there's another like Chia Coin where they've ran them in data centers basically for a year yeah. and then they swap them out and they're selling them as new, but they're used, but they're from Zone Three, which has no warranty in the U.S. Though, so, or OEM restocks. Um. I mean, it's hard to find a new drive that's affordable, that's not like double the price that actually has a warranty associated with it. Um, Amazon is horrible. Um, and it's like, and my question is, where else do you go? Because if you walk into a store, they want another hundred bucks. So being the cheapskate that I am, I, I scrounge really hard on Amazon and um, a couple other places, but I I bought a Seagate off Enterprise Drive and a SAS Drive off Amazon the other day, but it's gone up like eighty five dollars in the last three months. So, like, yeah, I like four more of them, but it an extra hundred bucks a pop, not really. Yeah. <clears throat> It actually looks like in the world of spinning drives on Micro Center's website, looks like they're all all three manufacturers are priced within a few dollars of each other. Yeah, they're pretty close. Yeah. Well, in, and the, that's, world, yeah. in the world of spinning drives. Well, and that's that's what's kind of for you. I was talking to Steve on on Saturday or whatever the I. I just out of curiosity, I tried to look for a spinning drive on AliExpress to see what they cost over there. I couldn't find any. Like, they're all solid state. And they had solid state drives supposedly up to 16 terabyte so NVMe drives. And they were like 30 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, that seems fishy. <laughs> <laughs> 30, 30 bucks means about, uh, what, 30 gig? <laughs> Well, no, they they were saying sixteen terabyte. Uh, <laughs> but I know, you know what they say. I uh, it's <laughs> but I was like, there was forty different vendors selling them at like that rate, and I was like, that this seems, you know, if it was a scam that they, would you know, I don't know. I mean, I could see a couple scammy sites, but that many of them seemed a little extreme. But then, like the two places I found that actually had spinning drives, that was like they wanted nine hundred ninety nine bucks for an eight terabyte. And I was like, that's ludicrous. <laughs> I can't imagine that they're not using spinning drives over there, but I sure couldn't find any. And I don't know where else to shop that, you know, would export to the U.S. from over there. But there used to be a, a big brand of Chinese stuff that was on Amazon there for a while. It was Waters or something. Um, had a couple friends tell me they're kind of all right drives for the price. And they're like half of what Western Digital or something costs. But for something like my MB server, I just host and you know movies and TV shows. I don't care if it fails. I, I the concepts to have a backup and I can restore it. They're half the price. But I couldn't even find those drives anywhere. I just did a search on AliExpress for eight terabyte, three and a half inch HDD. Got a big page full of stuff, but they've oh, got yeah. a their 
listing a eight terabyte Western Digital Purple at $189. And I, I say I tried just, I put HD drive or something like that, and I didn't. I only got like two vendors that had it. That, that shows at 309 at Micro Center. I would I would watch buying anything like that oh, yeah. off of Valley Express. If I put hard drive and all I get is solid state. Solid state? Man. It, I might just have to oh, I might yeah. just have to uh pop the two hundred and fifty six gig solid state drive out of this and put a one terabyte in it. Yeah, what they're you, getting cheap. Yeah, they're dead. What did you put for your search? Um, hold on a second. Or five twelve. Five five twelves are cheap too. Just that in the chat. Oh, the three and a half. Okay. Maybe that's what I was doing wrong. I guess you got to specify your dimension <laughs> size now. There we go. 155 for a 12 terabyte. Enterprise drive. That's not bad. I'm just looking on Micro Center right now. The N300 drives that I've been buying that had been 170 are now 195. And I've still got to get two. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's the, what I, I bought that 16 terabyte SAS drive and it's gone from like, what was it 250 something to 384 or something i'm like ah. i came to the conclusion a long long time ago that i did not like buying hard drives online unless i absolutely had to oh i'm not a fan i'd rather buy from micro center any day of the week but they'd never carry size and it's like <sighs> Yeah. They're getting closer and closer and closer, but I don't think they ever, or if they're going to do it anytime soon. The fact that they actually have server equipment at, after all these years is mind boggling to me that they never stepped in that world before now. Because especially for as many small businesses around, if somebody blew out a server, it's nice to be able to walk in and be like, bam. What brands of servers do they care? Dell. Oh, and Super Micro. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. own, yeah. Do they own Super Micro? No. No, Super Micro is a relatively older company um i'm not sure where they're out of i can tell you where they are you drive up route 8 um, interstate 880 from san jose and there's about a couple of miles worth of large buildings so i don't know if that's their <clears throat> manufacturing facility or what it is but uh the big buildings are there it says super micro on them there you go 128 terabyte pin ssd for 36 bucks 
I I, I kind of question it, but uh, yeah. Get it five different colors. <laughs> Must be good. Yeah. I can hook it to my phone. <laughs> I wonder if that's one of those that once you if you break open the case and everything, it's just an SD card. <laughs> I would suspect, but that's the kind of stuff I was seeing. All that. You know, I did like a search for internal drives, and it just keeps showing me all these like NVMe drives, and they're saying they're like you know sixty four and one hundred twenty eight and terabytes. I'm like, what the? I haven't. There it is, the hundred and twenty eight gig black for forty bucks. Yeah, that is a. Uh... That's a heck of a deal. And it comes with a micro USB cable. Yeah, that's that's fast. That's speedy. <laughs> Down at the bottom, I had a link for a Xiaomi USB-C thumb drive, two terabytes for 93 cents. Oh, you, you didn't jump all over that? Mm. 93 cents. Actually, a I'm, pretty little unit. I, I we should have existed. <laughs> that the uh, five hundred gig uh, for for eight bucks. That's that's probably not a horrible deal, even if it is slow. <laughs> as long as it's five hundred gigs. <laughs> Ooh, or a four terabyte for eleven dollars. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's, you know, if you've gone up in price, what NVMe drives cost now? I mean, they're ridiculously cheap. Uh, it's like every like somebody came through and slashed a zero off the end. <laughs> I mean, they're like four terabytes, like ninety nine bucks or something. I uh, looking at. Micro Center's 3D printers, they've gone up in price too. I remember I was buying them for about a hundred bucks a piece. They All are... those, those uh, XYZs or whatever. Yeah. 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 Those have gone up quite a bit. Quite a bit. The Ender Pros are still the same price or gone up like two or three bucks or five bucks, something like that. But yeah, they're a lot nicer out here. I got a couple of friends that's got the XYZs, but um, and, and I, I don't know, I, I didn't realize printers. Uh, 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 one of the guys I work with showed a video a little bit ago uh, of uh, this new, uh, was it Bamboo mm -hmm. A1? I mean, they're a little pricey, but their print speed's obscene. They're like eight times faster print rate. I, uh, I was watching a video about, about that and uh it's adaptive so depending upon what you want to print yeah it it it's could decide to slow itself down if it needs to if it needs to um it's it's interesting technology though that um he the the guy who was doing the video said you could force it even if you could force it to go faster, but going faster didn't necessarily produce the results that you would want. Yeah. <laughs> so somewhere in between of the old speeds, the slow speeds, and the obscenely fast speeds, you find a happy compromise and you get a benchy in about, I, I think he said he got a benchy in 20 minutes. Instead oh, yeah. of, well, I just said the guy I was watching a little while ago. I don't, I don't know. Benchy is that like the little boat? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I said the one I watched, the dude banged one out in fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah. And and he was doing it on uh, 
wobbly table. So he had one on concrete, one on his wobbly table, and then one he hung from the main support. Um, then you couldn't really tell a difference, um, which was kind of intriguing. Well, that's what this guy said was um, you need to find somewhere that rattles and shakes really don't matter because it, at speed, these things vibrate and make all kinds of noise you yeah you'll well, think you'll <laughs> think that there's something wrong with it but yeah it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do this guy would say it's a it's a you get quality precision and uh quiet <clears throat> pick two of the three <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's pretty much what the what what the reviewer that i saw say was you know if you if you wanted to go at speed just put it in another room and and close the door <laughs> it's going to shake your house apart <laughs> but he uh the the guy that i saw his basic conclusion was you get good prints if you slow it down just a little or you let it adapt to its own thing and you know 20 minutes for a benchy versus a couple hours for a benchy that's that's not bad yeah so well that's the so uh, i got me looking at crap when i was doing it during the meeting or while well, earlier at work and um I, this red art article came up and this dude was printing it looked like a transmission frame um and he'd build his own thing and it was like three feet tall and he's doing to make molds or something for a casting and uh he said he was so tired of printing them on a smaller printer that he you know he'd built this thing and uh and uh it was taking him eight days to print one and then he would have to glue the three sections together and get the seams out and all this and stuff and then this one prints it in like three days um, and then there was guys in there telling him how to change the nozzles and the, the infill seams, and he'd probably knock off another day, um, which was interesting reading through there. Yeah. But, um, I had never dreamed printing parts that big, but. <laughs> I, uh, I've glued some parts together, but I've never printed anything insanely huge. Yeah. Well, I, you ever probably never was down to the hive. The hive used to have a gigabot, which was like a three foot by three foot by three foot print. And uh, oh. it, somebody was print out of like a koi fish. Um, it took like days to print. <laughs> and, and just imagine what would happen. If they had a fast printer, yeah, fill the well, fill the pond with koi fish. Well, that's what I, was, I was just out of curiosity. I looked at Gigabot or Gigabot a little while ago, and they're up to their fourth edition now. Their cheapest printer is like thirteen thousand dollars. Of course, yeah. Um, you know, and then they go up from there. Uh, <laughs> and that was the one you had to assemble yourself. Um, but yeah, that. But that was like a ten thousand dollar printer. Somebody donated it to the hive. Um, yeah, insane. They end up selling it here before COVID. I couldn't believe they sold that. But they were tired of people screwing it up and the cost to keep repairing it because they kept burning up the board control board or something. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My sente man. What? My sente man. No. Oh well, I'm gonna have to bounce, guys. Catch you later. Oh. Take care, Barry. So okay. Nice. Well, nice eyes. We'll see you later, Barry. Take care, Barry. Barry, bye. Bye. Wasn't well, that the latest iteration? Wow.
This is an Apple. That's monitor. on the Apple monitor, yeah. Oh. I, I am working with mine. You see? <laughs> Where? Tried to make it look up and down and do it all randomly. So it can look left and right, up and down. It could blink whenever whenever it decides to blink. And I, uh, you have functions like blink and turn right, turn left. Sort of. Um, <clears throat> I could break them out into functions. Okay. I just have uh, inside inside of uh, one of the loops. It, it's uh, just random, random uh, numbers or ran. Yeah picks a random number and if it's greater than a certain number then it blinks or whatever and i've added um conditions like you know if it's looking forward you know that that state is center and if it's looking left then it state is left so it doesn't uh so it doesn't randomly pick I'm looking left and then it will randomly pick right, which would just cause it to slam the eyes over without going back. So it has to, it has to be center before it can pick right. Um, same with up and down. It has to be looking right or left to, to pick one of the up or down. Can you edit the, the maps? Do what? The bit edit, 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 edit the bitmaps of the eye to make it like uh, have the uh, half half open the eye, you know, <clears throat> like like. So, let me uh, let me find the the original. Um, The original sketch that I found the original author provided a master file which let you move the center eye around if I could find it. Where the heck did I put it? Where'd it go? I don't know where it went. 
<laughs> I've lost the project. It's gone. <laughs> That's why you need Git. I, I, well, I could plug in the in the hard drive that has. I know it's on a backup drive. I I know exactly where it's at on the backup drive. I don't know. I obviously didn't put it where I thought I put it. Yeah, well, I got a new present. Huh? I got a solar panel. Uh oh, a special one. A special solar panel. I got that. It's Sweet. Me. You never know what these are. <laughs> you just have this. This is for powering a camera. Yeah, I did updates to my cameras this week, nine updates, and I had nine dropouts from my iSpy. It turns out the latest updates have an option called RT, uh, STRP, RSTRS. RSTP. RSTP? Yeah, RSTP. Okay, anyhow, it's... It's an option, but by default, it's off. <laughs> that was a surprise. Worked great with Rio Link, but when I went to my iSpy, it was kind of a surprise. I had to go find that one. This is the uh, this is the file that that was provided, okay. and the way it's set up, you can just move the. Move the center around, ah. and then and then you can uh, line it all up, get it lined up where you want it, and just resave it. Save it as a as a uh, uh, JPEG or a PNG. And then I send it over to an online converter that converts it to C code. Okay. So if you wanted it to look down, but what I don't, what I don't get is actually how to get rid of the artifacts that are left over. So mm -hmm. I can make it look up a, a little. But 
but I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how this file actually works. I guess it's two different layers or three different layers or something like that. It's at least two. Um, and I would have thought that the bottom layer would have been all white dots. And the iris would have been transparent on the edges with black and white, or transparent on the corners with black and white squares, but that's not the way they did it. No, because if you move it clear over, you get the, uh, those are the lines that you see when it's moving left or right. And it merges like that, so you get the left and right. Hmm. I could you program that as sprites? I don't know. But that's why that's why when you look at at what I did with to make it look up to the left and up to the right, you can see that it's off a little because it it doesn't quite line up right. It's it's good enough because it doesn't last long, but. Mine looks. More like that with this extra little piece. Sticking up. Hmm. So I, I don't really know what they did or how they did it. I just know that. There it is. The original author provided just enough, just enough info to make it work. <laughs> and whatever TV library they were using did not like, uh, the M5 stack did not like um, how the bitmaps were were rendered for C. They they did not work right, so I had to re re encode them for the M five stack to work right, which really wasn't that big a deal. It was just sending them to another online place and getting them done the way the M five stack wants. <clears throat> I'm thinking about taking that and expanding it, making it bigger. Um, probably taking all the images that, that have been provided already and just making them uh, bigger instead of small eyes and doing one right in the center of the screen and sticking that inside of a pumpkin for Halloween. That'd be cool. And Maybe not on a TV set. Maybe on a on a uh, decent size LCD display. It might be easier. Might be easier than trying to stick a TV or an Apple monitor down inside of a pumpkin. But if I'm going to do that, I kind of need to get to work on that because Halloween is just around the corner. Yeah, sneaking up. I was, I was fairly happy with, um, you know, the TV project that that I've been working on. And then I came across those eyes and I'm like, oh, why didn't I find these earlier? <laughs> so now I'm thinking about starting over again with that TV and and <laughs> doing it all like again. The square one, really? Well, not 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 exactly square one, but you know back to the beginning having 
instead of a bunch of microcontrollers doing stuff, just having the little camera thing and because these eyes are a whole lot easier to to actually tell it to go left and right and up and down. I could actually have it doing stuff. I just changed the state of what I want. Change my change my loop so that it's looking at the state. So if it so if I change the state to be right, then it'll go and look to the right. And if I change the state to be center, it'll go back to the center instead of doing random movements and probably have random blinks in there because that would be that would be the way to do the blinking so there's a there's a bunch of ideas for these new eyes that i found that I wish I would have found before. <laughs> um, I know Vicente's probably seen it, the, the new Star Trek short. No. No. You have it? Star yeah. Trek? Yeah. Is that a new, a new series or a movie? No, it's um, it. They're called very shorts. Very it's shorts. Very short. Very short tricks. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'll, I'll show you. But I can't play it because Paramount. <clears throat> this one right here. This one's pretty good. Holograms all the way down. This one's really bad. They're supposed to be funny and they're supposed to be done in the style of the old animated cartoon. Okay. Um, this this one's pretty bad, but this one's pretty funny. And I'll put a link in the... You're putting the link in chat or what? I'll put a link in the chat, yeah. Ow! Let me share it. Come on. It's pretty, it's pretty good. You guys will get a kick out of it. It'll make you think. But, but, but bonus, if anybody knows what it's referring to. They they mix all, all kind of stuff, right? They they mix all all the series together. Mm -hmm. Looks like a a vintage a cartoon. Uh, an old. I've been I've actually been watching Lower Decks and I watched Prodigy and I I I enjoyed both of those. I'm still not com convinced on uh, Strange New Worlds, though. Or any of the other tracks. Do you... Do you know what they're referring to when they say holograms all the way down? No. What's about? It's Hol holodeck, or holodeck, or the holodeck, or something. Yeah, but it's a reference to turtles all the way down. Okay. 
which is like really old thing. There's the earth standing on the back of four elephants on yeah. the back of a turtle. Okay, that was cute. Yeah. A hologram within a hologram within a hologram within a hollow novo. And then the computer can't figure out what's actually happening. <laughs> it was one of their better ones. They've got, this is a 50th anniversary of Star Trek, the animated show, the, the original animated show. Mm -hmm. And they are, they have made uh, four uh, of these very short treks all in the style of the original animated show. So there's one more. The other, the other three, the other, yeah, the other three are a bit hit or miss, but that one was pretty good. That one was, was probably the best one out, out of the bunch so far. And it's only a couple minutes long. Oh. <laughs> oh. Futurama, which is back, their finale was called All the Way Down, and it dealt with pretty much the same subject, which makes me think, are we really in a simulation? This is how the air looks like when there is a <laughs> moon eclipse. You see? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Turtles all the way down. All around the world. All around the globe. <laughs> Flat air believers. Yeah. I I know we're not flat. It's just fun. So, are you working on anything, Vicente? Excuse me? Are you working, working. on anything? I, I was uh, assembling a, a programmer, a mega shield, to program the, the Intel microcontrollers, uh, MCS 4EA. The, let, let me show what I have. So one second. Mm -hmm. I Sante was not ready for show and tell. <laughs> okay, this is the this is the microcontroller. Um, let me let me uh, turn off the my background okay okay this is the intel uh, d8748 actually two two of them i i i programmed this one with the new programmer this is the the programmer i i made i there is a a web page that explain how to make it. And it's a Arduino Mega Shield 
You see? Okay, that's pretty sweet. So it, it has like a a DC 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 a converter, Boost converter to produce the twenty five volts, and then you use transistors to to control the voltage in different pins. So it's pretty nice and works very very well. It's a, it's a, a little hard to to assemble because all of the components are uh, stand you know, up, you know, to close. But after all, it works. I, I, I added the, the LED and the, the resistor, the, the resistor and the LED to indicate that there is, there is high voltage in the socket. This is, uh, I added it because uh, the guy that designed this, he, he used the, he put a RS-232 uh, chip from Max, Max, uh, Maxine mm -hmm. to, to produce the, plus minus 12 volts, but I, I am not using this serial port. I am using the, the Arduino port here. And you need to provide 12 volts in the Arduino connector because it used the, the power from the V in mm -hmm. here. This is it. So he was using he was using the max uh, twenty thirty two to to make the voltage. No, in, in this case, it, uh, he he made this bore to to fit in another bore that he designed that used the uh, eighty eighty six from Intel. Okay, and, and has the same form factor than the Arduino Mega. So he designed this board to use its own serial port. Okay. But with the with the Arduino Mega, you don't need it. Okay. Uh, he he provide the the code in in C in C code that has like a twelve files, but I I spent an afternoon changing everything to Arduino. You know. So now my sketch is in Arduino IDE. Uh, the sketch that controls everything is in Arduino. Okay. And he made a, a Windows graphical interface to control the, this programmer, you, where you select the, the memory, the, the microcontroller to because there are different voltages depending on the on the model of the microcontroller. So that's it. Cool. While I were traveling, all the components came from China, from Mauser, from Amazon. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, this is the most most expensive part, and it costs one dollar fifty from China. The the socket. So. Okay, you get a good deal on that zip socket. <laughs> I, I I bought the the board in Tindy, the market marketplace in in the, in the web. Tindy. Yeah. Yeah. It costs a eight eight dollars. And you have to pay, it, I think, um, seven more for shipping or so. That had to be a lot cheaper than buying an actual programmer, though. Huh. A real programmer. No, but for this cheap, it's very hard to find. Yeah. I, ha I have my Windows 85 
computer with a, a $500 programmer connected to the, to, the, to the Windows 95 just to program uh, this, this chip. Now I will sell back the, the window machine in Windows 85 and, and the programmer because this, this thing works pretty well. So what are you programming the eighty four or the forty eight to do? Excuse me. What are you programming the the little forty eight to do? This. Yes. Well, actually, uh, I I start my career uh, designing products using this microcontroller. Oh, okay. So I I have I have like twenty five products made with it. So I I just was trying to recall or remember some some things about the microcontroller, you know? Cool. So. Is that the same as the 51, except the 51 no, is a one-time? No, the, the 51 was designed after and based on it, but the 51 is more popular and more powerful, you know, but was was based in this, in the 80, 80, 80, uh, 70, you know, 48, the, you know, 80, uh -huh. the 48 series. It's the Intel calls it MC, MCS 48. Mm -hmm. That is like uh, 10 different models with, with memory uh, inside or outside. Uh, the, the, the one with the memory outside is plastic, plastic case. And this is with the with the window. It's an EE prom. But you can buy this in in eBay or in China for under two bucks, you know. And there are there are plenty of them, but they, they were used in the IBM key keyboard of the yeah. first PC. But was was replaced by the Eighty fifty one, that is more spread, more more used today. It still is in use today. Very cool. Well, this is what I was doing. Very cool. Yep. Now I am trying to design a, a 24 pins a chip IC that is a memory, 2K memory that has a video connector. So you can see in the monitor, whatever you change in the chip in real time, you know? You, you use the, the memory in your system, you plug in in your system the memory and you have a video connector that, and you you can see what is in, inside the memory all the time in the in the screen, or you can make programs that change the contents and appear, appear in the in the screen. It's like a a video controller inside a memory a form factor, you know. So you can use it in an in, a, in a, any any system that use. Uh, 20, 27, 16 memories, 2K memories, or any that use the same format. And you can see what, what's inside the memory all the time. And the memory is uh, read only, but I am designing how to control the, the video monitor, just reading addresses in the memory. Ne you never write, you always read. Okay, I will, will explain it in, in the future, but it's very good because you can use this memory in, in a RAM socket or, or in a ROM socket and works the same because you only need to read to control the stuff. Neat. This is a... The problem is the, the speed you need to 
because the, the memory emulation will be in software. So you need to check to check the lines, the control lines of the microcontroller and, and provide the, the content of the memory very fast when you have the address and the chip enable and, and read signal to, to put in the bus the, the data, you know? But the, the interesting thing is you can do that simultaneously with the video generation. You are producing the video in the screen and you are interacting with the microcontroller in the, in the system where the memory was plugging. This is a vintage idea, a, a project. Was, was never done and I, I like to try it. You know. Good luck. Yeah, it's almost ready. I have to all the parts. Uh, the concept is, I think, is work. The problem is the maximum speed of the microcontroller. The CDA80 can can access at four megahertz, but no more than four megahertz for the for the chip I am using. To have time enough to check the address, check the the read line, and and put the, the content in the bus. This need, need to be done really fast because it happens in 250 nanoseconds. You know, it's pretty fast. The, ne the next thing will be a memory emulator instead of the video connector will be a serial uh, USB connector. So you can see the memory content in your computer at the same time that the microprocessor is using the memory. So you can change the content of the memory or you can check how the microprocessor is changing the values and you can see them in your computer. Will be a, like a memory emulator in in a, in a single chip. I would think a Raspberry Pi Pico would be fast enough to do that with, yeah. and it's got enough pins. Yeah, the problem is the, is the size. You know, I want to use uh, 20, 24 pin dips, deep uh, size. Uh, board, so I need to have all the uh, voltage levels uh, at five volts in this size. You yeah. know, so okay, it's, yeah, it's, and it's three point three. So yeah, it's, you need to regulate your power for the microcontroller and change the, the mm -hmm. levels. Yeah, there are there are plenty of high speed uh, microcontrollers to do that but they need to be five volts. So I am thinking in the or microchip, uh, big, big microchip or uh, STM uh, microcontroller. And they have uh, several models that are five volts uh, tolerant, okay? The problem is that you need uh, 3.8 volts for uh, High level in 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 standard logic, five volts logic. You need three point eight. So I need, but the, this microcontroller from STM, you can increase the voltage until three point nine or something. So you will have the the levels, the five volts tolerance, and the output uh, three point eight, three point nine volts. So. It must work. I need. I need to make some experiments. Actually, it will work with three point three volts, but it's it's not standard. Try to produce right. TTL levels high with three point three volts. Usually it works. Do. Usually it works, but you need to increase a little bit more the voltage to be safe. You know. It'd be ugly, but you could yeah. put a couple level shifters on there that it 
Yeah, but the problem is that it's a bidirectional bus, so you will need uh, you need you need a space to do that to change the yeah. level. I, I want to just to connect the line then directly from the microcontroller to the pin of the of the deep twenty four. So, well, let's see, let's see. Well, actually, I, I did that in a, with a microcontroller, five volts microcontroller. I made an emulator uh, using the uh, six. It's a very old microcontroller before the the sixty five o two. There were a sixty o two or something like that. Sixty eight o two. It's a very old microcontroller working on five volts, and I was simulating the memory using a STM with 3.3 volts, and was working perfectly. So, theoretically, it's not safe, but works. Let me show you the, the, what, what I did. show you this is the can you see this this is the STM uh, STM microcontroller this is the STM microcontroller working in 3.3 volts acting as a memory for the uh, for this chip that is a um, It's an uh, 1802. It's, it's an 1802 microcontroller. Okay. 1802 five volts microcontroller, and it's it's working. I I I have the basic uh, I have the in, in the code of this microcontroller. I have Microsoft Basic in the memory, sim simulated memory here. And you have a serial connection that you can just work in Basic. But the program, the program, the basic program and the memory and the run, the ROM and RAM is here in the STM microcontroller. And, and, and then the, this micro, the microprocessor is working on five volts, but the, the speed of, the, of this microprocessor is one, mega, one megahertz. I want to use a CDA here running at, uh, at four megahertz. And simultaneously, the, the STM producing video, simultaneously. And because it's only the, the, the microcontroller, I can change the, the board for a, a, little, a little board, a deep 24 size package. I use in, in all systems. This is the, this is the, the programmer. Cool. Nice. So, so this is a demonstration that you can uh, interact, and, and this this microcontroller is five volt tolerance in all the pins, so it can read the address, uh, the five volt signals of the address, without problem. I 
will work on this the, the next month. I will be traveling again. I, I will try to, to do that. Nice. Well, it is 59. Okay. Yeah, it's it's time to go. Almost, almost time to go. Next meeting is in person, right? Next meeting's in person. Yeah. Is that? And, I, uh, I'll be in the other side of the Atlantic Sea. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you can always join us. We'll, we'll be virtual. Uh, well, no, there, there will be six hours plus there. So I'll be sleeping. That's no problem for us. Okay. <laughs> can, I can do like uh, uh, the China connection work uh, in the middle of the night. Oh my God. Yeah. All right. Well, right. I will see everybody hopefully soon. May, yep. may, maybe see everybody. Hey, some people. Anyway, I'll bring screwdrivers if you don't get yours by then. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. I'll Bye. Talk, talk to everybody all. later. Bye. Bye. Take care. Good night. Bye.